when I assumed office 20 months ago, our country was facing tremendous economic challenges. The cost of essential household commodities, high fuel prices, rapid depreciation of the Kenya shilling and spiraling public debt were threatening our economy. My administration has worked hard and consistently so that today the prices of essential commodities like unga and 40 shillings for a two kilogram packet to Kenya shillings 100 majorly attributed to our fertile the resilience of our farmers and good rains that were given to us by God. During the period fertilizer also from 7,500 to 2,500 petrol prices have come down to, from a high of 217 to now 187. The shilling has strengthened against the dollar from a high of 165 127, 128. We have made significant progress in pulling the nation back from the brink of debt distress. Is better managed, and our budget now has space for investment and in programs aimed at easing the hardship on and creating opportunities for our young people. Our GDP grew by 5.6% last year, among the 27 fastest growing economies in the world. Our inflation figures have fallen from a high of 9 last year to 5% in April this year. It is instructive for the nation to know a hundred shillings we collect as taxes, we spend 61 shillings in debt service. We have paid Kenya's Eurobond debt that was borrowed in 2014 of two billion dollars that are our neck. We paid the last installment of 500 million dollars last week. Today, <clears throat> Kenya's debt burden is much less, more sustainable, forced to redeem our country from the discomfort of debt and assert our sovereignty. Early this year, Treasury had proposed a $1.18 trillion. I did direct that it be reduced by 200 billion to come down to 303.3. The finance bill 2024 generated to actualize this budget underwent which resulted to concessions by which we agreed to drop proposals on VAT on bread, motor vehicle circulation, DAT on locally manufactured diapers and sanitary pads, as well as excise duty on money transfer services, among others. The additional tax measures we had proposed in this year's finance bill were to raise money in $346 billion. When the concessions were, were made, subsequent to public participation that by parliament that came down to 200 billion. I had made taking into account our situation and the priorities that are there. I was of parliament seated behind me and those who voted yes for identifying of our nation. Because when I made the proposals with my cabinet, 
we had certain critical priorities for the nation. Number one is our agriculture. We did make recommendations money we were going to raise from the finance bill was 10 billion shillings that will go to fertilizer subsidy, 18 billion shillings that would go to making sure that junior secondary school teachers, 46 of them, 46,000 of them would be confirmed on permanent and pensionable basis. We are very clear in our minds that education being the greatest no child in Kenya should go to a school where there is no teacher or they, where it is because of that reason that in this finance bill also we had committed extra 20,000 teachers. We also had envisioned because of the program of last mile connectivity to homes, especially in rural areas. We had committed 40, 50 million for every constituency for the last mile connectivity. Because that there are many people who today cannot go to hospital because they can because they have no health insurance. We had committed six billion shillings to operationalize our universal health that would make it possible for every citizen to have a health insurance, those who cannot afford to be paid for, and to also operationalize the chronic illness fund. It possible for those who suffer from cancer, diabetes, hypertension, to be able to go treated and go home without being asked for any money. We also had to put in money for our coffee farmers to retire the heavy debts that are bedeviling our coffee farmers. We also had allocated money for our sugarcane farmers sure that our sugarcane farmers get out of the debt that they're in. We had also committed to our milk farmers to, be to make sure that every farmer is paid a minimum of 50 shillings per liter. That these farmers, very hard working citizens of our nation, get a fair return and for feeding our nation. And that is why I commend these members of parliament for agreeing with us that all the priority areas I have mentioned were the to be funded. And by so doing, they supported the proposal to incorporate also the views of the people. They came back to us after they went to listen to the people of Kenya. And they came back and reduced the budget on their own by 146 billion shillings. Notwithstanding all these concessions, it has become evident that members of the public still insist on the need for us to make more 
And because I run a government, but I also lead people. And the people have spoken. I am grateful to all the members of the national who voted yesterday affirmatively for the Finance Bill 2024 as amended on the floor of the House to incorporate the views generated through public participation. And following the passage of the bill, the country witnessed widespread expression of dissatisfaction with the bill, regrettably resulting in the loss of life, destruction of property, and disaggression of constitutional institutions. On my own behalf, and on behalf of these members and many other Kenyans, I send my condolences to the families of those who lost their loved ones in this very unfortunate manner. Consequently, having reflected conversation around the content of the Finance Bill 2024, and listening keenly to the people of Kenya who have said that they want nothing to do with this Finance Bill 2024, I concede I will not sign the 2024 Finance Bill and it shall subsequently be withdrawn, and I have agreed with these members that that becomes a position. <laughs> Accordingly, there is need for us as a nation to pick up from here. And I am therefore proposing that because we have gotten rid of the finance, it is necessary for us to have a conversation as a nation going forward. How do we manage the affairs of the country together? How do we manage the nation together? How do we work on the budget with the deficits that now exist together? And as I committed last, I will be proposing an engagement with the young people of our nation. Our sons and daughters. For us to listen to them, as I said on Sunday, listen to their views, listen to their proposals, their ideas, their concerns, and what they think we should do better as we go forward. I am also recommending a multi-sectoral, bipartisan, multi-stakeholder from civil society, religious organizations, national bodies, for us as a nation to speak to the future of our country together. And this will be on matters that are contained in the bill and matters of Kenya have canvassed in the conversation that has been going on. In this regard as well, I am directing for immediate further austerity measures to reduce expenditure, starting with the office of the president, the entire presidency, leading to the entire executive arm of government. Operational expenditure in the presidency be reduced to 
for the Convergential Fort, reduced travel, hospitality, renovations, and other expenditures. This will cover the entire presidency and also the executive arm of government. I also propose that equally, parliament, judiciary, and county governments, working with the national treasury, also undertake budget to ensure that we do live within our means, respecting the very loud message that is coming from the people of Kenya. <laughs> that I have discussed with many uh, stakeholders I will be meeting uh, shortly after this meeting on charting a way forward that makes sure that we carry the in this very important journey as we go into the future as a country. Let me also confirm that as we deal with austerity, the loud message on dealing firmly, decisively, and expeditiously with corruption is a matter that we have discussed, <laughs> that it will take the front banner as we go into We will have a very important conversation, and I want to remind us that we should proceed within the foundational principles upon which is founded, namely constitutionalism, adherence to the rule of law, and respect for constitutional institutions. Continue to operate within the parameters of the law. I thank you. I will uh, take a few questions, three questions to be specific. Thank you, Your Excellency. And <coughs> the first question will start with Elizabeth Mutuku. Good evening. My question is on young leaders from the Gen Z uh, generation yesterday and the day before yesterday. What happens to that? Second, there were young people who were killed during the demonstration. That as the head of state, thirdly, how do we move forward on the budget cuts, especially now that uh, we're going to have austerity measures, yes, but how then do we secure development? Thank you very much. Please. No, no, it's okay. Um, I have said it is a very unfortunate situation. I wish that would not have happened. And there is a framework that will make sure that those six Kenyans who died yesterday will be accounted for. Number two, I did promise the country that there will be no extrajudicial killings going forward. And ever since I came into office, there is not one incident of extrajudicial killing. What you said about abduction are statements that were attributed to some of our civil society groups but all the people they mentioned are, have since been found in police custody, and those that were already processed were already released. On the matter of development that you have said, 
minus the finance bill, it means that some of the development programs amounting to 200 billion shillings, we will have to cut down, to delay them. They will have to wait, some of them, for next year. We will try it again. Uh, we will try next year to find some money. Some of them um, we will have to uh, cancel because that's the nature of things. And it is because uh, the people of Kenya have spoken loudly that they want a leaner budget for us as a country. Question number two. We'll take the next question from Busara, K24. Nam, so langla kwanza ni eh, ni wazi kwamba uh, matumaini ya vijana wa Gen Z na baadhi ya wa Kenya kwa wabunge yamepungua kabisa ama hata yamepotea. Kwa hivyo kama ra unachukua hatua gani kuhakikisha kwamba tunahusisha vijana katika maamuzi muhimu hasa katika masuala ambayo yanalenga taifa au ujenzi wa taifa so lingine je utahakikisha vipi uwazi katika mpango wako wa kupunguza matumizi serikalini maana umesema kwamba kuna austerity measures je kutakuwa na transparency na swali la mwisho ningependa kujua kama pengine kutakuwa na fidia kwa wale ambao walifariki au kwa familia kwa wale ambao walifariki hapo jana na je serikali itasimamia malipo ya wale ambao kwa hospitalini hivi sasa wanapokea matibabu kutokana na majeraha waliopata hapo jana asante thank you very much um, about 214 Kenyans were involved in various skirmishes and many of them went to hospital. 95 of them were treated and released. Some of them, um, I think one is still in ICU and others, I think 14, the minister is here, uh, are still in hospital. But majority of them were treated and released yesterday. As I have told you, on those who um, lost their lives, there will be a mechanism of how they will be accounted for. On the young people uh, whom you have said, how do we listen to them? Let me say the following. Number one, I did make 